blush and I'll be the first to admit that my art isn't for everyone. Um, I've gotten very far in my own personal style and figuring out where I fit among the art spectrum and I, th I think I'm pretty proud of myself for how far I've come. What's your background? I guess I could say I come from somewhat of a troubled background. Uh, I don't know how that's affected my art because I haven't really taken that into consideration. But um, first things first, my parents are divorced. But at this point, what child doesn't have divorced parents? And um, my mother is a recovering alcoholic. She has been basically since I was born, and that's been caused a lot of trouble in the family. I don't fault her for it because it's a disease, and uh, my biological father committed suicide when I was five years old, and I didn't know about it until actually recently because that was something kind of kept me from my own per from my own safety in childhood, but that kind of thing has. I'm sure it's subconsciously affected my art in ways that I haven't noticed, but it's been something. <laughs> what does your work aim to say? My work aims to say a lot of things that people probably won't understand <laughs> unless I explain it to them or they put their own meaning to it. Um, uh, recently, it's because of my own personal struggles that I've just basically spat out onto a piece of paper and because I haven't had many other outlets to deal with it and um, I guess most of my art is kind of based on struggling versus acceptance of things and also I have the series which is separate from me and that includes uh, modern mythos which is basically um, using olden religious themes to create new creations in modern times with personalization and personification of inanimate objects and that kind of thing. Does your work comment on current social or political issues? Um, social, perhaps. I'm not sure about political, but... Um, social issues have fallen more along the lines of what people are suffering from nowadays, like how um, depression and anxiety has been doubled over the years and through, throughout generations. And um, basically my own personal things that other people have probably struggled through as well. And. Um, my style has sort of developed into a messy kind of ink style in order to get certain frustrations out. Who are your biggest influences? Um, my biggest influences probably come from, like, as people, it probably comes from people with styles like uh, Tim Burton, uh, but I do have a lot on Instagram that I follow that I really admire the styles of. I'm also influenced by my own personal experiences, um, by other people I'm uh, acquainted with, associated with, uh, that kind of thing. <laughs> How have you developed your art making? It's come a long way, <laughs> um, but I know that I had a really difficult time finding a consistent style and I still don't really have a consistent style because I switched from media to media to influence to influence. Uh, How have you developed your art developed. making? So, oh. like start, I mean like some of your earliest pieces were dangle. Yeah. I love dangle um, stuff. I still do draw dangle sometimes. Um, basically, uh, dangle was one of my earliest original characters that I still like to to this day because I love the theme of puppets and dolls and things that vaguely resemble humanoid but aren't quite there just have that little bit of uncanny valley to them that can make people uncomfortable or intrigued and um so with that one was it more 
it's a story it's not necessarily autobiographical it's just yes. like a really cool story uh-huh and um uh i guess this is kind of an example of like how my creatures have developed because um this was crux uh, a creature that I like only drew once. This was the first time I did Copics as um, something developmental in my style, but I've sort of just developed something more sketchy and I wouldn't say angry, but more reckless instead of clean lines, clean line art, clean coloring and that kind of thing. So tell about like the planets and the mm -hmm. Icarus and... Um, the planets were also more of a de developmental piece because I wasn't planning to do that project at all and I don't usually plan to do my projects they sort of just hit me in the face and I proceed from there but it started as just a doodle of the personified moon that everyone do that everyone does the side profile of the moon with a face in the middle of the night and I decided well what if the sun had a face too and uh, I always add little bits of symbolism in my work. I always love to do that kind of thing and explain it to people because like adding like a little clock in the sun's eye for the revolution of the earth counting as a day and that kind of thing. And the planets piece took about like six months to complete in total. Um, that definitely showed me a lot of things about colored pencil especially and what I like to put in my work versus things that I would rather do without and issues I had to work around, um, procrastination, forcing myself to work on it and get it finished. <laughs> so how about Icarus? Uh, Icarus was definitely a stepping stone in realizing that I love to do stuff based on old religions, old myths, old stuff from like the Romans and the Greeks, ancient. and. Icarus was more a study in um, somewhat human anatomy versus um, like adding my own touch to it because I don't believe there's there are probably like statues and maybe some descriptions of what Icarus may have looked like but I didn't take any of this into account and just did what I believed he would have looked like just like a young man with sun-kissed skin, brown curly hair, and not a care in the world versus the other side of it after he his skin was burned and he looked like what everyone looks like underneath mm. with muscle, tissue, that kind of thing. It's kind of like saying, well, uh, we do reckless stuff, but we're all the same underneath all of our skin and flaws. <laughs> How do you seek out opportunities? Scholastics. Scholastics was definitely an opportunity to um, get my art out there and show it to people even if they don't have the description for it um, and like I can't explain it to them but they can put their own meaning to it like how this piece was actually also when I was not in a good headspace and every symbol up in this thought bubble has a meaning to me when that was happening to me during that time like during that time there's the 12 o'clock right here that has like stress around it and that was because at that time I there was something going on where I really hated the time noon and that's kind of like hard and personal to describe but I hated the time noon and I used music to calm me down I hated um, I felt like time was pointless I was losing track of time always but like everything up here has a specific meaning to me. So I, now you've been, I think you've had a piece in Scholastics every year. Yes, I think Which I, is remarkable. I'm really happy to say that I'm fairly sure I've had a piece gotten into Scholastics at least every year of my high school career. Um, starting from, I think Dangle got a gold key, which I was very surprised by because I was not proud of that piece. It was a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> and that was starting as a freshman, so that really paved the way for me to keep going and definitely want to put more stuff in. And I believe I also got another gold key for the Caladrius piece. 
and a silver key for others. Um, this was actually not even intended to go into Scholastics. It was actually just like a sketch I'd done, a messy sketch I'd done with pen in my sketchbook that I didn't think would ever see the light of day. Mm -hmm. And I was happy that it got an honorable mention, even if it wasn't intended to go anywhere. You also got an honorable mention for your whole portfolio from last oh, year. Oh, yeah. yeah. I did my por portfolio that was Modern Mythos. How, tell us about Caladrius. Caladrius, and decided to do something more abstract. Um, the Caladrius is a creature from mythology that's usually winged, it's an avian, and it's usually a healer. And I did a back, uh, back profile of a Caladrius with white hair, um, wings, and um, a tail. And there was also symbolism of a yellow snake, and yellow is the color of deceit. And um, I believe the snake was coiled around his neck, which symbolized a kind of slavery to an avian who was a healer to this person that was abusing that healing ability. <laughs> so you, a lot of these are original characters. Do you write stories as well? I do write, actually. And I'm actually very proud of how far my writing has come along with my art. And they've both grown together. Yes, yeah, so the writing ideas feed the art and the art feeds the writing. Yes. Um, sometimes they're unrelated and separate, but most of the time they're connected in ways like Caladrius. I have done some writing of him. His name's actually Cully. <laughs> and um, uh, the snake's name is Deceit. What, just the word. What about the one that I call the Goon Squad? Oh, the Goon Squad is actually... Um, they're three YouTubers, but they have alter egos that they like do skits of and like different writing of in, in their channels. And a lot of people take it onto themselves to create their own like versions of these characters since they're not really officially copyrighted or anything. And the creators like to see content made of them. And I took these characters and put them into a Tim Burton-esque style because each of these characters have their own way of being, like, grotesque and unnerving in their own specific ways. Like, one is a normal man turned crazy, one is a man turned bitter with vengeance, and then one is a man who just wants to cause mayhem for reasons unknown. One of my, also, one of my influences I forgot to mention was um, artists from the Renaissance who would paint things like that, like uh, Michelangelo with the Sistine Chapel has to be one of my favorite works ever because of how much detail and how gorgeous it is with religious themes and everything about it is just amazing to me.